Welcome to the Existential Empath Podcast. My name is Tanya, and I am an intuitive empath. My intention is to share valuable tools and techniques that I have learned so you can tap into your own inner healer naturally and intuitively. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I have guest Julie Hilson. Julie is an intuitive with a master's in communication sciences. She utilizes her intuitive gifts by connecting with the angels to receive divine wisdom and guidance. Julie is launching a virtual book called Life of Love, A Joyful Guide to Self and Sensuality. She shares her passion for living a life of magic and joy, and her book is a powerful tool for self discovery, and finding the joy in everyday life. Welcome, Julie. I'm so excited to have you on the show today. Oh, Tanya, it's my absolute pleasure. I was so happy to have this time and share this field with you in this space. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. So today, you and I are going to talk about connecting with the angelic realm, how to live a life full of love and joy. So I thought I would just do a brief uh, synopsis on the archangels and the angels, and then we can kind of lead into all the different types of questions that the listeners may have about connecting with our angelic team. How does that sound, Julie? <laughs> I'm in. I'm game. Let's go. Bring in right. the angels. <laughs> I know. I'm loving it. I'm already feeling it. So archangels and angels, from my understanding, they function in a hierarchical system. And the word archangel derives from the Greek word arch, meaning chief messenger. And the archangels hold a specific frequency, vibration, or energy that is attuned to a specific mission or uh, even a power that they can harness. And so the archangels pretty much oversee different aspects of humanity, and they are a direct extension of the divine, of God, of source energy. And they have uh, incredible insight, incredible powers and wisdom, and they, ho they hold an extremely expanded vibrational frequency, right? And so, you know, certain angels, say our guardian angels, which we're going to talk about all this today, are, you know, pretty personal to us and our lives. And these angels are not restricted by time or space, kind of like humans are, right? So uh, they can, they can call, we can call upon them at any time and whatnot. And we're going to talk about all of this because guess what, guys, they are always here for us and we can call upon them at any time. So, Julie, how did you first realize that you could communicate with your angelic team? <laughs> well, Tanya, that's a great question. Um, oh, well, I always felt a presence that wasn't human around me. Um, it wasn't like I see dead people or anything like that. It was always <laughs> just like this comfort. Um, and then they they communicated with me first. It wasn't me reaching out to them. They kept leaving me signs and signals and and once I read a book about how to talk to my angels, I was like, oh, well, that, of course, like I knew, like it resonated. So every, it's like things just, you leave little clues and they leave clues for you and you just sort of pick up on it. I mean, have you had that experience, Tanya? Yeah, I have. So I have a really funny story. When I first started uh, awakening to this, uh, you know, I, I was the one who saw dead people. I worked in uh, the hospitals and I was seeing <sighs> through the veil often, but then I started to learn how to connect with my angelic team. And I started to see number sequences, 44, 444. 4, 4. That was kind of my first sign. But then mm -hmm. I started to communicate with them regularly. And I was asking them, show me more signs than just number mm -hmm. sequences. Well, one night, this is hilarious. One night I was in a dead sleep and I woke up at three in the morning to my sound bar out in my living room, blasting angelic harp music, organ music, like what you hear. It shot me <laughs> straight out of bed. And it, first of all, it terrified me. And then as that, the energy piled up from, from fear to anger, I was mad. I'm like, please, you know, I'm like, don't you ever do that again? Don't you ever communicate? But then I could hear kind of in my clear audience, them giggling, like, you know, that it was funny. They thought it was humorous to yeah. wake me in my sleep playing blasting angelic music. I mean, I, I swear the whole neighborhood could have heard it. It was so loud. So at that point, I knew that I wasn't just communicating with them, but they were communicating back with me. And so, Julie, let's talk about this. Do we all have an angelic guidance team? <laughs> Absolutely. 
Absolutely. They're assigned to us or we can ask them, like you said, you ask them to come in and in your guides, your team, they'll resonate with your inner soul. And, and it, like you said, when you're introducing, it's all, it's all a frequency. So you put yourself in that frequency and they can reach you. But yes, everybody has the ability because everybody comes from heart energy. And that's what this is all about. And, and it's, they don't want to scare us. They, <laughs> you asked for it. They have a sense of humor. <laughs> I think mine, it was more, it scared me, but then I, then I laughed. It was humorous because I thought, all right, well, you scared me out of bed. And then it, but then I could tell <laughs> that my, my angels were kind of sarcastic or funny or humorous. And mm -hmm. that's, that's my personality too. So of course there's a direct extension of me, you know, so right, they're right, going to communicate with me in a humorous way, which you, may be yeah, different you, for everyone and how they communicate, right? <laughs> yeah, they're going to, they're going to respond to the signal that you put out and that, that humor, that sarcasm, that's an energy. So it's all quantum. <laughs> it's so fun. We can just play in this space and it's just, I love to live a life of magic and I'm never going to go back to being curious and receptive to this because it's like, I never have to look for a parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> Neither girl, me neither. And my parents actually picked up on this when they came to visit me. And uh, when I first moved to North Idaho, they were like, how do you always find the upfront closest best spot at the perfect time? I said, I have an, I have a drive or I have a parking angel. I have a driving angel. I actually visualize my car with Archangel Michael's wings mm. on it. And I've always done this for many years. And it's so funny because there's been times when even in the snow last year, I was pulling out and some woman, she slammed on the brakes and looked like she was going to nail me, but it stopped right before it got to my car. And I was like, thanks, Michael. <laughs> you're, you're there protecting me. And so, yeah, I, I can totally feel for you on the parking spot. <laughs> mm. And Archangel Michael is the man. He is, oh, <laughs> He is. And I've had, you know, when I lived in Florida, I had gone to this little spiritualist uh, village called Casadega. And on Sundays, they would uh, do group readings for people. And I just kind of went with a with a friend. She had lost her daughter and she wanted to connect with her, learn how to connect. And I was just there. This is well before I was even connecting with the angels. And I was just sitting there in the crowd. And one of the readers who was up up front at the podium looked right at me. And I'm like, okay, why is he staring at me? You know, is he going to read me? What's happening? Well, he made a comment that my, uh, the angelic team that I had with me was very powerful and very pronounced. And he said it was very strongly Archangel Michael energy. And at this time I wasn't really familiar with the different angels. And so that may have been a seed that was planted, you know, for me to be able to start researching them and, and learning about them and having a deeper connection. But I think many of us connect with Michael first. He's, he's kind of that go-to guy. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, he's our David Hasselhoff or whatever it is. <laughs> just... So Julie, let's talk about how do we connect? You know, so for those of us who are new to this and don't want to be woken up in the middle of the night by their sound bar blasting <laughs> harps, you know, what's it, what's it, what are some good ways for us to connect with our angels? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, this is going to sound crazy because you think they're up here and yeah, yeah, but actually being connected to the ground, being being on the earth and being around nature is the easiest way. Um, so if you, when you're connecting to the ground, think of you, you have roots into Gaia to mother earth and then just feel her support and, and let it come up through your heart. And if you're in the chakras, you can think about your individual chakras, but you don't have to, but it's just that feeling of being connected, sustained, being in a place of gratitude, you can look up online different emotions and the frequency that the emotions um, emit. Like Hawkins, Stephen Hawkins has a chart that he actually analyzed brain waves, and there are different frequencies for our emotions. And so you can you can get really good at having gratitude and love and just sort of emanating that kind of feeling. And then then just open up and ask, say I'm here. And in my book, I have devotions to give you the words. So if you're not sure what to say, because yeah. you know, and I think and that's where we all start. So we're like, what do we do? <laughs> yeah, it's like, and then I was scared that I was going to bring in like, you know, like evil. Scary like, stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like I was like, well, I'm going to open this portal and I'm going to have, you know, you think of all these 
horror movies and like you know and I was like I don't want to have to have an exorcism like you know I was brought up Catholic and I was like gosh you know the priests just come in when there's spirits like I never was exposed to the the angelic spirit because there, there's lots going on like there's a whole you know there's a thin veil between us and and what's going on all around us all the time but um, as long as you're in that heart gratitude high vibration and you shield yourself that's another really important thing is to to when you're bringing up the energy from mother gaia in your heart put a bubble around your being um, of protection and it's not for anything scary but just so that you don't have to um, have anything come into your field that could get stuck you just want it you just want to sort of so important because, you know, I, I speak it out loud. Uh, I do. I actually have learned Hebrew a little bit. And I found this book called Archangel Magic, Archangels of Magic. And basically it's, you speak uh, these, um, it's similar to light language kind of, but you speak these certain uh, words and tones for each archangel. And as you do that, you visualize um, certain, uh, what they call are sigils, but they're actually like, they look like light codes kind of. Mm -hmm. And that's when you can really call, call them in. And I think that's when I started to learn that we can, we can, we can speak upon them on command. And in the book, they talk about not being meek when you call upon them. Don't be like, oh, please come in, you know, please come in. I, I, you know, am I worthy of you to come in? It's more, you stand in your presence and you command them in and then that's how they know you're being serious. And so mm -hmm. oftentimes, you know, I think of that movie, Eat, Pray, Love, when Julia Roberts is on the, you know, before she, she moves on in her journey, she, she kind of drops to her knees and she, she prays to God and she's like, you know, what, what should I do? I, I, you know, but she was in a state of, um, I, I just, I need some guidance, you know, and she had the emotion behind it. And it's really bringing in almost that law of attraction when you're calling them in too. It's just the, you know, you've got the thought, I want to call in my team. You've got the emotion behind it, the love, the gratitude, the appreciation, right? Mm -hmm. And then when you speak it out and you command them into the presence, holy cow. And mm. I don't know about you, Julie, but I've done this with some clients and it's like, my hair is like, you know, it's just like, <laughs> flies out. I'm like, oh, I just called in, you know, one of the, the team, you know, the members of their angelic team and it can be extremely powerful. I've had moments where I've cried, I've laughed, I've, you know, can you, have you had those experiences when you called them in? Like you've had this burst of emotion? <laughs> no, I've been, honestly, Tony, I haven't, um, it's funny, I, I haven't done it with that powerful intention. It's been more like a gentle request. So they just come in in a gentle way. Uh -huh. So I'm curious. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to be a little more assertive to get that. <laughs> if I want my hair standing on the end, I'm gonna look at that. Well, and a lot of it is, I, you know, goosebumps <laughs> that you get when they come in. Oh, like, yes. Holy goosebumps. cow! And that the mm -hmm. book. I like that book. Uh, he talks about how you know we do. We have the the. It's the will to command them in they are there at our at our call they're there to assist us and i always joke that i have all these you know angels kind of sitting around me hanging out like on the couch like hey when when do you need me you know i'm here you know but we live in a realm where we have free will and they can't just just step in we have to call upon them and so you know oftentimes when we call upon them we aren't always being serious but in those moments of despair or distress or sadness that's when we're serious because we're like all right now we I really need you but when we're in those higher frequencies of joy and and love it's like we still can can really command them in and boy when they do it's you know like I said mine are quite humorous so they'll do funny you know, funny things to show me. Um, like one time I was, I was, dr I was driving, you know, into, into the city and I had called upon, uh, I think it was G Gabriel. I had called upon who Gabriel is the messenger. And I was looking for some clarity in my life. And there presented these clouds in the sky that literally look like angel wings. And I could not, you know, and I'm looking around like, can other people see those clouds too? Or is that just a message for me, but when we call upon them and we do it with that, and it's not aggressive, it's assertion. I, I like the word assertion. You're like, 
I'm going to stand in my power and I'm going to be really serious. I, I want them mm-hmm. to come in and boy, when they do, you'll feel it. <laughs> yeah. And Dude, it's super I, fun. <laughs> I have a friend. We love to go hiking together and we'll, you know, when we get to the top of the mountain, they just come in, you just feel it's like they're wrapping their arms, their wings or whatever it is around us, you know, and they're there and they tell us about how we're soul sisters and we're here for each other. And, you know, <laughs> when you're sensitive, lots of things get to you. <laughs> so you have to... so true, especially when you're in nature, because <laughs> when you're tuning into that, you're like, okay, are those the angels or are those elementals or what? what's going on here? I feel like I'm tuning into all these subtle realms, mm-hmm. you know, outside of our third third dimension and you know the 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 angelics the the archangels are usually you know they're usually in the seventh dimension or higher and they're categorized as light beings right so they're really you know oftentimes when they show up and i know for some people at least some of my clients they're like you know, I think in the third dimension, we see them as these humans with wings when really the way they show up, at least for me too, is sometimes orbs. I've seen them as streaks Mm -hmm. of light. I've just seen them as cloud structures. I've seen them, you know, but mostly there's a light, uh, you know, light attached to A light component. Yeah. Yeah, I was at a, a funeral just two weeks ago and the man who's speaking about his mother and there are orbs all behind him. And I was looking around like, does anybody else see them? I know, you know? I know. <laughs> my, my mother-in-law's bat mitzvah. She did a bat mitzvah with um six of her friends. And there were freaking angels all over that synagogue. <laughs> they were just dancing. They were doing the Muriel song. I mean, it was like, oh, it, 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 it's like, man, I wish you were there because we could have like, I'm crazy about it, but yeah, I mean, they're there. They're there. It's so fun. And so, you know, and I don't always, yes, they're light. And so, you know, keep that in mind. Don't always be looking for the human with the wings and the sword, you know, like we think of Archangel Michael, but they can show up in forms of light. And that can include light language, light codes, uh, the sun, the sun. I, I, oftentimes when I'm sitting in the sun, that's when I'll feel their presence mm. around me too. And so Julie, I don't know about you. It sounds like you can see them often too, or me, I see them occasionally, but I more feel them. And it's like that clear sentience. Mm. And I'm like, Oh, they're there. There's no joke when they're there. And you know, it's not a heavy energy. It is a light carefree, joyful, loving, peaceful Mm -hmm. energy when they present themselves and you're like, oh, (laughs) this feels so good. Right. Like I haven't, I haven't seen the the robe and the wings and I I have not seen that, but I've seen light and felt that intensity. And and so that's, I think that, you know, they'll show up however you're comfortable because I have friends, like I have an angel group we meet and, and they see colors around people or, you know, it's just sort of, it's just, it's individual, just like everybody's individual. So, I mean, that's the divinity coming through and you can't predict it or, or say how you want it. You just open up to it. It's just beautiful. It's a, it's, I always say it's a quest and you just show up and, you know, and, if you miss Show the mark, who cares? <laughs> yeah, just be like, <laughs> I just put myself in a state of joy for 15 minutes. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Exactly. And so, you know, if if this is all new to you and you want to take these baby steps, and like you said, you had, you know, we all have kind of had that religious programming that we have to go through someone else to have contact, you know, from, from our angels, like whether it's a priest or, you know, whatnot. And I think, you know, many of us, we were introduced to our angels during, you know, uh, you know, at that time, but we Mm -hmm. all can communicate with them directly and they are all an extension of us. Right. So it's like, Mm -hmm. they're, you know, we, like you said, it's like, we look at them like they're out there, but really they're kind of transcendent almost within Mm -hmm. our own energetic field. And so, you know, I've even had people say to me, well, I don't really call upon the archangels because I know they're busy. And I'm like, it doesn't, it doesn't, that doesn't matter to them. They're in a different dimension. They're in a different, they, they don't see time. Like we see time. They can assist multiple people, beings, animals, you know, Mm -hmm. all at the same time. And so don't feel as if you're unworthy to be able to communicate, you know, with them. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, 
Julie, how can we connect with our angels to better us, you know, kind of better help us in our everyday lives, within our relationships, our, our careers, whatever it may be, how can Mm -hmm. we communicate with them to assist us in these areas? Okay. So first of all, be very clear on what you want. Okay. And it doesn't have to be like, you know, if you, if you're looking, looking for a car, you don't have to be like, I need a car with a five speed transmission and 500 horsepowers and, you know, white rims, you know, you don't have to be that specific, but just know what you want. Like, um, say you're having trouble with your mom, you could say, you know, and this is, this is great. Cause you, if you're worried about them being busy or you don't know the angel to ask, you can just have a blanket in, invitation. You can say, let's give you an example. Not, I've never done this for my mom. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, this Asking actually works. for a friend. Asking for a Asking, friend. <laughs> I mean, a friend's mom. Yeah. No. <laughs> so like, angels of relationships and love and understanding, please guide me to help my mom see how she's making me feel and how she's presenting and give me the grace to navigate the situation to the highest good. However you see fit or, you know, because it's never like what things don't always, it's always what you think are better. Mm -hmm. You always ask for what you want or better. So for the highest good covers it. Yeah, it does. For the highest and best good of all. And all parties involved. All parties involved. (laughs) I just, you know, get away from the situation, ask the blanket category angel, whether it's health, relationships. Um, angels of resource, you know, just give, just think of the broad category. Those are the angels you're asking. And then be specific and ask for that or something better for the highest good. That's, that's the template. Yeah. And that's pretty, that's pretty easy. And if you speak that now, you can journal that you can actually, cause I've done that when I first started writing that down. So that way you really are connecting the right and left hemispheres of the brain and you're being serious, right? Cause we talk about when we call upon our angels, we want to be, we want to take it seriously, right? Cause they want to know that we're serious. And two, Julie, I don't know if you've experienced this, but you know, it's like, okay, I'm having this issue and I'm like, all right, I'm going to call upon my angels and I've got my mind how I want it to play out, but it doesn't always play out that way. But, and at first I'm like, oh, really? Like, you know, this is how it's all working out, but they can see things, you know, from a much higher perspective than we can here. It's like, mm-hmm. they're on top of the mountain where we're, you know, kind of, we're just hiking up the mountain and they can see the entire view where we're just seeing a limited you know, kind of perspective or perception. So have you experienced mm-hmm. that before where you've called upon them and then it was totally different than what you expected? <laughs> well, yeah, I had this, I had this job and I loved it. It was so fun. I get to work with little girls and as a volunteer, I was coordinating volunteers. It's just an amazing, great thing. And I really wanted to work out. I really did. And I just, there was just something with the management that I didn't resonate with. It was just something. And, but I loved you know, I love parts of it, but it it wasn't where I was supposed to be. And honestly, if I would have kept that job, that position, I wouldn't have written the book. Like, so, you know, I was asking for help to get through this and to, you know, to do my best because you always want something to work out. And it was, it was a really good thing, right? Like my alignment was there. It just didn't, didn't click. And so I'm, we're in the storage room and I got poked in the eye with um, a yard sign because we're cleaning out the storage room because we had all these signs we'd put up and um, poked in the eye. And I was just like, it was, that was it. Because the woman I was working with had little compassion for my eye. She just was worried about me suing her. I mean, it was obvious. She didn't care that I was hurting. Mm -hmm. She was just, and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. Like I actually drove myself to the eye doctor. And on the way, the angels are so awesome. (laughs) I was listening to classical music to calm down. Cause I love, I love instrumental and I'll, I'll like stream Spotify to four, four twenty eight or one, 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 or, uh-huh. you know, I'll pick five twenty eight. Yeah. <laughs> five twenty eight. Like all oh, those are so good. So I'll listen to that. And I was just calm and breathing. I'm like, oh, you know, this isn't me. So anyway, it's instrumental. You know how those, st- those stations are, right? Well, the angels put a song on with words. They're like, <laughs> it was a song about seeing clearly, like, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. (laughs) Yeah, it was something, I can't remember the exact words, but it was something about seeing clearly. And I was like, 
I freaking just got poked in the eye. I got no compassion. And the angels are telling me to see things clear more clearly or something about vision. And I was like, okay, I get it. Like, thank you. I need to just quit this job. Right. And that's an example of how they can be humorous, right? Because you're you're in pain. You're, you're probably driving like this. Oh, know, yeah. Like, I should have been driving, but I was not going to let her drive me because she was pissing me off. I'm like, I'm getting out of that energy. Yeah. Mean woman. So <laughs> you're driving there and you're like, oh, I'm just upset that, you know, I just went through this, but yet they're communicating you. Now, some people may not Re recognize that communication they may just oversee it or overlook it you know no pun intended but <laughs> yeah you know you were in tune to that you were in tune mm -hmm. to the fact that they were communicating back with you and I think that's where mm -hmm. we need to be open to receive that communication where mm -hmm. had you not you know had you just kind of you know been like why, why is there music on here or why are they talking you know you didn't mm -hmm. really you wouldn't have played into that and said oh okay I'm, a, I'm on the wrong path I'm not in alignment I'm being guided you know back to where I need to be <laughs> yeah. And I needed to learn the things from those little girls taught me so many things. And I learned so much about myself and it was just such a beautiful, I mean, the angels were around us the whole time. So I was like, I'm in the right place. The angels are all around these little girls. And I taught them how to meditate and it was just so yummy. It was so wonderful, but <laughs> I had completed that mission and you're not supposed to stay where you are, but that's, <laughs> that's like one of those things you, that's, you have to sort of practice and learn to be present. Maybe don't pick up the phone and, and complain to your best friend when you have a problem. Maybe just get quiet or, you know, that, that music, like you said, that light language is transmitted through music and it's no joke. It is no joke at all. Yeah. And I love that about, about being present in the moment. And cause oftentimes we do when we're frustrated, what, what do we want to do? We want to pick up the phone and vent to someone else. And what are we doing when we do that? We're transferring energy, right? So yeah, we may feel better in the moment, but we've just garbage dumped on, you know, our friend or our family or our coworker or whatnot, when really what we need to do in those moments is sit, to be still, to sit with that energy, ask ourselves, you know, why are we feeling this frustration, move it through the body, and then open ourselves up to receiving the information that's coming yes. through. <laughs> yes. And I've even lately, I've been like, I've been with the feeling. I accept it. I say, okay, thank you. Frustration. You're showing me that I'm doing the wrong thing or whatever. And then I transmute it. I say, okay, I'm sending this out because I no longer need this little ball of energy. I don't need this frustration. I've, I see what it's telling me. I'm sending it out to an, something that could use it because that energy needs to go to somewhere else. It's not created nor destroyed. Right. So just send it away from your field to, you know, you can even slingshot it, whatever you like to do. If you're a Katniss, you get your arrow out and you shoot it to, out to the universe, whatever, whatever your thing is, you could, you could put it in a grenade and pop the pin and toss it, whatever you think, just transmute it, just ask it to be transmuted and sent to a place that could use the energy because you don't need it. Absolutely. And so Julie, can the angels help us heal? Have you had experiences, mm -hmm. you know, you just talked about your eye. Have you had any other experiences where they've come in to assist with healing? Absolutely. Every time, every time I get a fever, if I feel bad, I'm not saying I don't get sick. I'm saying I just, I take my, my supplementals or whatever I, you know, whatever I have, um, vitamin D, you know, airborne, emergency, whatever I can get my hands on. I, I get that. I take, you know, I'm not, I'm not denying we have physical needs. Like you get run down and sick for a reason. So take what you need. And then I will lay down and I'll just, I'll just ask the angels to bring rays of light and I'll just picture it through my body and just let it go and ask them to heal it. And, you know, my breathing changes, it's, there's something to it. And usually by the time I go through all my systems, it's almost like a progressive relaxation technique that I, I don't know what's, you know, I don't listen to a tape or anything, but I just go through all my systems and I find where it, where it's sitting and I ask them to zap it, to remove it. And you can visualize it. And usually I'll go to sleep for five or six hours and drink some water and 
and usually I feel better. I'm not saying, I'm not saying don't go to the doctor. Like if you're sick, go to the doctor, but you can ask the angels to remove areas of resistance. But a lot of it's just sitting still and feeling where it's, where your hangups are. Absolutely. And so, <clears throat> excuse me, I've actually, I actually have a story where I called upon Archangel Raphael. I was, when I first moved from Florida to uh, Washington state, I had moved in the month of November. And so I had lived in Florida for 20 years in the sunshine and in the warmth. And here I moved to Spokane, Washington in November when it's freezing and it's snowing and it's dark. The sun goes down at 3.30 in the afternoon. Well, my body went through such shock from, you know, being in that environment to being in a completely different environment that I feel like I, my whole body locked up with almost like fear or you know, change or stress or tension, whatever it was. Well, I went through about a three month period of time where I could not uh, walk. I could not walk. My whole lower back had locked up so badly. And I was, it was just, it was just an effort to take a shower, an effort to go to the bathroom. I mean, it was a lot of work. Well, I got to a point where I, all I could do was lay in bed and I, I knew applied kinesiology. I knew muscle testing. So I would just lay in bed and I would muscle test, you know, mm -hmm. is this an emotion? What is this? How do I heal it? How far back? And so then I got to the point where I had, I had done everything. I had been doing tapping. I had been doing muscle, mm -hmm. the emotion code, everything, just laying in bed. And I got to a point where I was like, I'm going to call upon Archangel, you know, Archangel Raphael. He's the healer. He, he transforms you know, the, the physical and the emotional pain. Well, I laid in bed and I was at that desperate stage. I was just like, I want this pain to go away. It was unbearable. And I was one that I'm not going to take pain medicine. I was trying to heal myself naturally because I mm -hmm. knew deep down it was something more than what I was physically, you know, experiencing. And so I kind of laid there in bed and I, I commanded Archangel Raphael. I mean, I, honestly, I was angry. I remember just saying, where are you? I need you now. I need you to take this pain. And then I visualize mm -hmm. this beautiful emerald green light just surrounding me. And at that moment, I felt the presence of Raphael come in. I felt mm -hmm. just like almost like hovered over my chest and this massive burst of energy just kind of flooded out of my heart up and down my spine and i had tingles like nobody's business and i was sobbing and sobbing and sobbing and it was just this massive release of emotions uh you know mental physical spiritual all of these things had moved through my body and i started to see myself visualize myself walking and not having pain and mm -hmm. you know it was almost like where i was in that bed it, you know i wasn't paralyzed but i was pretty darn close i mean i had to crawl to the bathroom i was in such agonizing pain and mm -hmm. so i fell asleep after that it was almost like this massive energy rush that had come over me i found myself i got hot usually when i mm -hmm. speak light language too i get really hot and so this was way before i had even started speaking light language but i felt that heat and then i just passed right out and i think i i woke up and it was late at night it was like two in the morning or something and i remember i had to go to the bathroom and i was i just jumped out of bed i, I jumped out of bed and walked to the bathroom and i'm like <laughs> did I just do this? Like, <laughs> you know, so this, this healing took place, but then the next day the pain came back a little bit and I said, okay, now I know what to do. Like, I know what to do this time. And so, you know, when we have those moments where we're that, you know, physically, you know, where I couldn't even walk, I, I had no other choice. I, I literally had no other choice. And, in that moment is when I, I just sat there on my phone and started reading about all the different archangels and what they're, cause I'm like, okay, who can I call in now? You know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, how do we know which angels to call upon Julie, you know, in those situations? <laughs> just ask for the angel of angels of hell, you know, <laughs> healing, you know, you know, it's like, there's so many. And, and I've even, this resonates with me that the angels have goals too and so when we ask them to help and we're not so specific if we can just be general then you give other angels a chance and um that's sort of cool too and i i choose i lie adore that you research and you're like oh who's the next one to get to and and that's <laughs> beautiful i mean i love that it's so cool and and your story about the emerald and the i just it's just amazing i just 
Thanks for sharing that. It's so cool. Yeah, that was probably one of my, you know, I've had profound experiences with Michael, but that was probably my most profound with Raphael. And so I wanted to briefly just go through some of the angels, the archangels and, you know, what, what their powers are for those of you who are not even familiar with them. And so, you know, we all are pretty much familiar with Archangel Michael. He's the protector. He's the one that he's more of a masculine energy. And when you visualize him, usually in photos, you'll see him with a sword and he's got armor on and, you know, but he's the one that you can call upon for safety and security. And so, you know, like I said, when I drive my car, I literally visualize Archangel Michael surrounding my vehicle, you know, with a bubble, even my home. I've even had that where I'll, uh, you know, visualize just his energy surrounding my home. And so Shamuel mm -hmm. is another one. Shamuel is the peacemaker. So if you're having a hard time in your life, feeling calm, peaceful, or even gratitude or appreciation, call upon Shamuel. Raphael, like I said, is the healer. Uh, Raphael helps with physical, emotional, mental distress. Gabriel, I love. Gabriel's the messenger. Gabriel's the one that showed me the, you know, the angel wings in the sky. So if you're looking for clarity or you're having a hard time expressing yourself, which many of us do sometimes, you know, like you had talked about in your work environment, you had someone that you worked with, you know, that was difficult. Sometimes we have a hard time expressing how we truly feel and we may bottle that up inside and that can cause physical pain in our body. So Gabriel, um, Gabriel's great for that. Uriel is the illuminator. So if you're seeking truth or you need to shine some light on something, call Uriel. I haven't really utilized Uriel much, but uh, that one's always kind of there <laughs> just in case I need it. Uh, Haniel, Haniel is the intuitive. So Haniel is a very feminine energy versus Archangel Michael's masculine energy. And that's when you're looking to try to manifest things, or maybe you've lost your faith and your hope, you know, in life, or you are having a hard time following your gut instinct. Haniel is a good one for that. And then the last one I have is Ariel and Ariel is the grounder, which you talked about, you know, you, when you go out into nature, you connect with the angels. And oftentimes Ariel is the one that will show up, uh, cause that's connecting to nature, the animals. So if you're a, you know, a big gardener or you like to hike or take walks in the woods and, uh, you're seeking, you know, looking to seek clarity, call upon Ariel and Gabriel. Those are the two that would be good, you know, mm. to provide you with some messages. So, uh, you know, Julie, I just kind of wanted to go over those briefly because people are like, well, which ones do I call upon? But I do want to mm -hmm. talk about how do we find more joy and more love in our life? Because this is what your book is about. And, mm -hmm. you know, are there any tools or tips that you can share with the listeners on, you know, those days, you know, or weeks or months that some of us go by where we're like, just not finding the joy. How, how do we tune back into that again? Yeah, well, I mean, you have to you have to really look at the paradigm you're in because we have these we have these overlays that we have to have certain things or we have to reach certain goals and and so many things are performance driven that it can take your joy if if you hook into that paradigm of performance driven um, acceptance any kind of you know do competition. Your, your ego is there to help you survive, right? And everybody has an ego and it's, the ego is a beautiful thing, but you can't let it control you because if you let it control you, you're you're buying into that system of, of materialism. So the best thing that I tell people do, to do is to really find what brings them joy, what lights you up, because it could be something as simple as volunteering with kittens, it could be, Wait, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it could be as simple as having fuzzy socks and a cup of tea, and that could bring you more joy, joy than a Louis Vuitton handbag. And I have no <laughs> problem with Louis Vuitton. Like, if you like the design, it makes you happy. It, it lasts forever. You know, buy the Louis Vuitton, but don't buy it because your neighbor has it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, really find out what makes you happy. You know, maybe it's a new shower head. You know, that can be very joyful. Like yes. spend the time to just find out what you need. And we have so many gifts. Like we have hot running water. 
Do you know how amazing that is? Oh, just... I, I appreciate my hot shower every day, especially um, when it's 20 degrees here. <laughs> yes, yes. It's so, I mean, this might seem contrite, but just stop and realize what beauty is around you at every moment. I mean, we have we have this wonderful skin that covers our organs and we have this pulsing blood in our, you know, we have neurons and we can, we can have sex and we can, we can share with people. We can hug each other. We have children dancing and laughing that don't care what color anyone's hair is like (laughs) just, just start experiencing what's around you. Start, you know, looking at their sacred geometry and leaves. I mean, even if you can't get out to the forest, if you have a plant, just stare at the freaking plant. They're amazing. Like if you look at how they're growing, I mean, in our food and just and just be immersed in what whatever you can. Just take that time to just be. And that's that's the part of the sensuality is just being connected and present. I mean, and it's not easy because we have so many distractions, but if you can just spend five minutes just in quiet and just feel your heartbeat. Yeah. Talk to yourself like your best friend. You done that. Felt your heartbeat, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It's yeah. like consciously done it where you're like, oh, mm-hmm. I just, I, I feel the blood pumping through my veins. I, I feel that. And like, you know, like you said, appreciate a plant. I was just doing that this morning. I'd put mine, we had some sunshine. So I put mm-hmm. mine in the window and I was just telling them how much I love them and how beautiful they look. Mm-hmm. And so like you talk, you know, being present in the moment, what are some ways that we can be more present? You know, mm-hmm. we're, we're in a society full of chaos, full of distractions, mm-hmm. full of stress. What are some examples of how we can at least start to be present in our lives? There's, there's so many ways, but I guess if you're frustrated, you can't be present. So you have to figure out what's what's bothering you and be really honest and, and have compassion for your feelings. Um, Cause if you feel like you're in a hamster wheel or you feel like you can't calm down to be present, there's, there's something driving you outside yourself that, um, that you you've lost control of. And, you know, it, it might not be a quick fix. You know, there's, you might have some soul searching, like you had that experience when you moved, that move brought up something and you had to detox. Like crying is not a bad thing. Crying is a detox. Absolutely. And you, there there's cultures that save tears because they're sacred. Like it's, it's so- it's healing. Yes. Crying so if you healing. need to cry, you cry, get it out. And it's okay. You know, just be, be who you need to be today. And if you can't show up for someone else, this isn't to make you feel guilty. Like shame and guilt are just absolutely useless because they don't do any good for anybody. And they're really low on that chart we were talking about. So if there's days you can't give back that you don't feel like you're putting out energy that you think helps the world, just ask the world to help you that day. Just, you know, that's a perfect time to ask the angels, say, angels, I'm going to need your help today and just show me. And, you know, maybe that's a day you just do self-care, but find out what that self-care means to you. It may, it might not be buying stuff on Amazon. It might be taking a bath and putting some essential oils on, you know, and, and so just explore, be curious about what makes you happy because it's, it's just you. And that's why it's challenging because you have to know yourself. There's no recipe. Absolutely. Cause we get so caught up with you know, well, that, you know, that person does this and that, you know, that's their self-care, but you've got to figure out what your own self-care is. And so, you know, my sister's really big into the Huga lifestyle. It's H-Y-G-G-E. It's a, it's like uh, from Denmark, I believe, but it's basically mm-hmm. just learning to feel comfortable in your space, you know, in your home mm-hmm. and doing the things that bring you joy in that space. It's actually a really powerful tool or technique. So, you know, for those of you, this is new, it's, it's pronounced yeah. Huga, I believe, but it's spelled H Y G G E. And it's really a neat way to kind of just take your home or your room or your office or wherever you may be and provide comfort, you know, mm-hmm. in it. And that can be through 
food. It can be through your decor. It can be through, like you talked about your fuzzy blanket, your <laughs> fuzzy, fuzzy blanket. socks. What, yes. you know, if you're working from home and you know, you don't have to, if you're doing zoom calls all day, you don't have to dress up in a suit. That's not comfortable. You know, just mm-hmm. wear, wear your jammy pants and some fuzzy socks, <laughs> put on a tie yeah. if you have to, <laughs> but you know, it's really just finding yeah. comfort in your everyday life. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, for me, when I'm feeling disconnected or not present, I really pull myself back into my breath. I, I think, mm-hmm. you know, that's an easy, free, <laughs> in a way yes, yes. Right? To, to breathe, to, to focus on taking breaths in through your nose, out through your mouth, you know, in mm-hmm. your nose, out your nose, in your mouth, out your mouth, however you want to do it. But mm-hmm. it's really just taking time to focus on that vital life force energy that is coming in and out of us every single moment of every single day. Yes. Yes. And some people meditate. It's hard for other people. Some people like just to dance and have a little movement. Um, Just find out what, you know, what, how you can get chill. Yeah. I love that your sister has that. It reminds me a little bit of Feng Shui, but um, less, less on the elements. I, I talk about that in my book too, to include the five, the four elements in your decor so you can feel connected to all the the magic around you. So oh, I love oh, how these things come together. It's I do so too. Fun. I love that. So let's talk about your book, Julie, Life of Love, A Joyful Guide to Self and Sensuality. Let's talk about, you know, what, uh, what does your book entail and how can people find your book? Yeah, it just came out last week. It was a week ago today, and it got bestseller on Friday. So I'm so happy. That's awesome. It was See, really call cool. Call on your angels. They'll assist with that, too. Oh, my gosh, yes. Well, they helped me write it. So I'm like, guys, you know, and it's so fun to see the messages repeating. I think we're, you know, it's the crystalline messages that we're getting through. And we're we're here to transmit these messages. And and I love it's repeating. And the themes, the themes are all there. And it's so fun. So um, yeah, my book is, it's, it's asking the angels to help in all the areas of, of getting to know yourself and getting to know what your body needs to feel good. And then, and then the last part's about relationship dynamics. And I have fill in the blanks. I have word searches. It's a, it's a really fun book. I had a blast writing it. And every time I read it, I'm like, oh yeah, the angels want me to remember that because yeah, I know, I right? <laughs> I don't always remember everything because I'll forget to ask for their help. And they'll be like, oh, duh. All I had to do was ask for a little help. You know, in the Bible, it says 365 times ask for help. Does it really? See, every day. (laughs) Every day you're allowed to ask for help. You know, God doesn't want us struggling. We're not here to struggle. No. And so it's funny. Last night I was noticing I was stagnant on my YouTube subscribers. And I'm like, all right, angels, you've guided me to start sharing information out into the world. Why is there a halt on the amount of people that are, you know, that my visibility is reaching? And I said, I'm asking for your assistance in clearing this, whether it's my block of fear of being seen or Mm -hmm. just a block, you know, in the, in the energy in general. But the funny thing is I woke up this morning and I had 50 more subscribers and I had been (laughs) stuck for a while. And it's not about, you know, for me, it's not about the subscribers. It's more about the message getting out to as many people as possible. Mm -hmm. And so, and I thought, well, geez, maybe, maybe I put a block on some of that. Like, I'm just Mm -hmm. like, Ooh, I'm putting stuff out, but I'm a little fearful of how many people see it. So I called upon the angels last night and I also called upon my social media platforms. I said, all right, if you're going to clear that, clear them all. Well, my Instagram was just going off the chain this morning. And I'm like, okay, this is really hilarious because personally, I think it was my block. I think it really was. Mm -hmm. It was like, you know, it's like you get to a, a certain level where you're like, you know, probably you, when you were writing your book too, you're like, I'm putting this book together And now it's time to put it out into the world. It's one thing when you're doing it for yourself, but it's a totally different (laughs) dynamic when you're like, all right, I'm going to put myself out there in a way that's, you know, might be different to the people around me that are accustomed to seeing who that version of me is. But the moment you put yourself out there, you're creating yourself a new timeline. You're creating yourself a new version of you, right? That it can be kind of scary at first. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, but then once you're out there, you're like, I'm fully committed. And I think our, our angelic team is just standing there waiting for us to say, okay, (laughs) everything's in line. Everything's in order. I've written the book. 
I've created the, the podcast. I've created the YouTube channel. I'm putting it mm -hmm. out there, but now I need a little assistance for you to ripple it out into the world. And so we can ask upon that, right? And it sounds like mm -hmm. you've done that with your book. You said it was the best, you know, it became a bestseller like mm -hmm. almost immediately. And I, I witnessed that last night mm -hmm. and today. And so a lot of it too, is just us coming to terms with where we are in our mm -hmm. journey too. And are we ready to really put ourselves out there in that way? And so Julie, mm -hmm. I give you a lot of kudos. I give you, you know, <gasps> for putting yourself out there and writing this book, putting it together, taking the time to make it very interactive and dynamic where you have all these different techniques and tools in it that you can, um, not only read, but participate in. That's, that's amazing. Cause that's really mm -hmm. also using both hemispheres of the brain. Mm -hmm. And that's when we really expand, you know, in our growth. Yeah. If people are ready, you know, you have to be ready and it's not easy, like you said, and it's stepping out, but you know, as long as you're staying true to what your goal is, I mean, you're just, you just keep moving forward and just, you know, keep the faith and, I ask God to show me the highest good every day. What can I do? You know, and I'm not perfect, but I'm going to be compassionate to myself when I fall and I'm going to learn. And, you know, it's just, we're just here to have this adventure, right? We get this. We <laughs> and some days it's a little, it's an easier walk. And other days, many of us are forging new paths. I, I had a guest on the other day and he's like, I was trying to find supplements to help me, but I couldn't find anything. So I had to create my own. And he's like, and that was not easy to do. And so many of us on this awakening journey, we're literally creating new paths. You know, we're taking out, like I said, the machete and we're just chopping away at a whole new path through the jungle or through the forest. And that's not easy. But with that said, we're creating a path for others to follow. And, you know, there's times when we're leading and times when we're following. And, you know, Julie, I, I just, I, you know, I really appreciate the energy that you have brought today to the, you know, to this, to the show. And I thank you so much for being vulnerable, for putting yourself out there and for sharing, you know, your guidance on how you communicate, you know, with, with angels and hopefully, you know, not hopefully, I know this will be of value to all of those watchers and listeners who are also seeking the guidance of their angelic team. So Julie, how can people reach out to you? How can they find your book? You know, where, where can uh, people find you? <laughs> yeah, my book's on Goodreads and Amazon. If you search Life of Love, A Joyful Guide to Self and Sensuality, it comes up. There's a digital, there's a Kindle edition and print. I recommend the print edition just because you can write and draw on it because like I said, there's charts. And then my website is www.youneedapeptalk.com. <laughs> I, I started that before the angels. I've had it for over 10. I couldn't believe it's over 10 years, but I used to just I used to put recipes and give people health tips and tell them what crap was in our food, you know, because that yeah. used to really bother me. It still bothers me, but now my my interests are more spiritual and, you know, you know, any anything about a life path. But yeah, I started that as to a, an avenue to help people connect and, and live a, a healthier life and, you know, things just build on each other. But um, all my podcasts are on there and I encourage people to comment and suggest new episodes and my books on there. If you want to buy it, you know, it links up to the different platforms to buy it. So yeah, that's how you reach me. I'm also on Instagram as Jay Hilson. Um, I'm not on there a ton, but more and more I, I meet people and they're like, well, let's connect. And so now Instagram's pulling me a little more. <laughs> so. I hear you. I hear you. I, at first I was like, I don't want to be involved in any of these social media platforms, but you know, in order to be visible these days, you know, to get our word out, to, to shine our light, we have to connect in these ways. And so mm -hmm. unfortunately I, I felt that pull too. It's like, Ooh, you know, but I've limited it to just Facebook and Instagram myself. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm on Facebook too. But yeah. So I just, I've done this. If there's anything negative on my feed, I just unfollow, unfollow. So huh? I think I've, I've sifted through a lot of the political stuff that I don't, you know, I know I, I look at people and what they do. And that's my my political stance is show me what you're going to do and yeah. then I'll vote for you. I don't, <laughs> I don't listen to anybody because they're all just throwing out stuff. So I just look at policy <laughs> and what they voted on. And that's cumbersome. But 
<laughs> I totally hear you. And I think like we talked about, you know, to, we can all have a connection with, with our, with our angels, but you know, when we start paying attention to what we eat, paying attention to what we read, what we watch on TV, what uh, energy we're around. And if we start to cleanse and purify that, the connection just gets stronger and deeper and more powerful. And mm -hmm. so, you know, we are here in a physical existence, you know, but with that said, we have, we do, we have to tend to our physical. <laughs> I say, yeah, I say, you got to take care of the meat suit. <laughs> yeah, we do. We have to take care of oh, this physical, physical avatar. But with that said, mm -hmm. when we do that, it raises our frequency, it raises mm -hmm. our vibration and it allows us to have a much more fine tuned connection to our divinity. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so I do, I, you know, there's a reason why we pray over our food. It, we've just been kind of taught to pray, but it actually raises the frequency of the food. It's setting an intention mm -hmm. on the food. So I've started mm -hmm. to do that just kind of like Reiki almost hold my hands over my food and raise its frequency. Mm -hmm. So that way, when I'm ingesting it, I'm not ingesting, you know, lower frequency. And so it's just mm -hmm. these little tools and tips that, uh, you know, we learn to, mm -hmm. to kind of just share with others and take it or leave it. If you resonate with it or not, then yeah, exactly power to, you know, to you. But I do, I suggest if you are on social media, cleansing and detoxing your social media, it's mm -hmm. see, I have a much more um, joyful experience on my social media now, because mm -hmm. I've done the same. I've kind of unfollowed or cleansed things. I've added mm -hmm. things that I enjoy. I enjoy nature. I love seeing. Mm -hmm. So I follow a lot of landscape, you know, type, uh, mm. you know, pages and whatnot, but those are just little things that we can do to, uh, bring more joy, bring more comfort, more compassion and love into our life. So Julie, thank you so much for coming on the show today. I appreciate the energy that you bring and all that you're putting out there into the world. Same. My, my total respect and honor for you, Tanya. So nice. Thank you for having me. You deserve to navigate your life as an empath in alignment with health, happiness, and abundance. To learn more about the services that I provide, including Beyond Quantum Healing Hypnosis, EFT Tapping and the Emotion Code, visit my website at www.thesoulcafe.org.